Hello students, in this video lecture, I will be discussing the proof of Kelly's Hamilton theorem. But before that, I would like to describe few important facts regarding Kelly's Hamilton theorem. So, the first important fact we should know is that this theorem was stated by Kelly. Fine, and this theorem was given in 1858. And what Kelly did? He proved this result for 3 cross 3 matrix and he assumed that this result was true in general fine and later on five years later there was another scientist mathematician sorry hamilton so what hamilton did in his series lecture on quaternions he proved this result that a rotation transformation in three-dimensional space also satisfies its characteristic polynomial so that was the point where he proved this result so eventually neither neither Kelly nor Hamilton neither of them they didn't prove this result in general fine but yes the theorem is just given after their names so after that in general the proof was given in 1878 by George Frobenius so this was the scientist who gave the proof in general for Kelly's Hamilton theorem fine and after that we have numerous other proofs that were given by many other mathematicians until date we are learning many proofs which are proving this Kelly's Hamilton theorem so I'll be choosing one of the proof and I will be describing that proof in detail in this video lecture so let's discuss the proof of Kelly's Hamilton theorem and in the end I will be describing an application on Kelly's Hamilton theorem so what I considered here is I will be considering any A which is a n cross n matrix. So already we know the statement of Kelly's Hamilton theorem as I have described in my previous video lecture. So let me take the characteristic polynomial corresponding to this A matrix. So I will be denoting this with rho of A. So the characteristic polynomial is generally in that is nothing but the determinant of A minus lambda I. So this is uh, nothing but a polynomial in lambda fine. So to be more precise, I'll be writing here as lambda, right? And since this is an n cross n matrix, so we'll be getting a polynomial in a degree n. Now this value will be equal to minus one bar n. So in general, lambda raised to bar n plus some a1 lambda raised to bar n minus one and then so on to a n. So that is the journal n degree polynomial that is the characteristic polynomial fine and since a will also satisfy so we'll be proving that a also satisfy this characteristic polynomial that is that is if we replace lambda with a so what you'll be getting here is minus 1 raised to bar n into a raised to bar n plus fine a1 just replace lambda with a so this is capital a into raised to bar n minus 1 and so on to a n so this is equals to 0 this is equals to 0 so that is what we are interested to prove now I'll be using a fact here so using a fact I'll be proving this result and what is the fact the fact is we know that a into a joint of a so So a into a joint of a is nothing but the determinant of a fine so i'll be using this thing in order to prove the, the result so let's start so step one that is a minus lambda i into a joint of a minus lambda i this is nothing but determinant of a minus lambda i fine and with any identity matrix and i have denoted this determinant of a minus lambda i just observe here so determinant of a minus lambda i i have just denoted it by rho of lambda so this is equal to rho of lambda into i fine so just mark this equation as star so we have used this fact that a into a joint of a is nothing but the determinant of a fine and the, we have applied this property on the matrix that is a minus lambda i 
so the second step here is now i'll be using that what is adjoint of a minus lambda i so this is again a polynomial but the degree of this polynomial will be less than the degree of this polynomial now why this happen because just let us look at a 3 cross 3 matrix and observe what is happening so let us assume any entries let it be a1 2 3 7 8 and 7 and let it be 13 15 and 17 so whenever we are asked to calculate the adjoint fine and this is a minus lambda so you will be subtracting lambda and you will be getting a polynomial here so whenever you are asked to calculate the adjoint you will be calculating the cofactors fine so once you are starting from c11 fine so you'll be hiding this row and this column and you are left with the two cross two matrix fine so whenever you calculate the adjoint of any matrix the degree automatic comes automatically comes less than the degree mentioned in the given matrix so that is the fact which i'll be using up here so the adjoint of a minus lambda i will be a polynomial but the degree of this polynomial will be at most n minus 1 so this will not be exactly n fine so let me write here now joint of a minus lambda i this is now again i'll be denoting because i have denoted the determinant of a minus lambda i with row of lambda so i'll be using the same uh, denotion here so this is row of any lambda fine and let us denote with ij's okay where ij's will vary now this is nothing but this is a polynomial fine in lambda obviously whose degree so this is a polynomial in lambda of degree at most n minus 1 fine so these were the two important steps which were required to prove the result so i'll be marking this with double star so since that joint of a minus lambda I was a polynomial of degree at most n minus 1 so i am writing that at joint of a minus lambda i is again a polynomial of degree at most n minus 1 so let me write it with the coefficient some b naught right plus some b1 lambda plus b2 lambda square plus so on to b n minus 1 lambda n minus 1 fine so this is the value of adjoint of a minus lambda i fine and we have marked the first equation as just look at here so a minus lambda i into a joint of a minus lambda i is determinant of a minus lambda i right so what i'll be doing is i'll be substituting the value of a joint of a minus lambda i which is nothing but a polynomial of degree at most n minus 1 so i'll be substituting the value of this equation here substituting substituting the value of a joint of a minus lambda i in star so we have marked that equation as star so what we'll be getting here is a minus lambda i into adjoint of a so what was that joint of a that is a polynomial now what is the polynomial b naught plus b1 lambda plus b2 lambda square and so on to b n minus 1 lambda n minus 1 fine and that is equal to minus 1 raised to power n bracket starts lambda raised to power n plus a1 lambda raised to power n minus 1 and so on to n into some identity matrix right now what we need to do is we need to compare the coefficients fine in this equation so just compare the coefficients in above equation so let us start comparing the coefficients in the power of lambda so first of all let us compare what is constant so once you multiply a with whole of this equation so what you'll be getting is a into b naught and once you multiply the second factor that is lambda so uh, lambda will come in each of the terms so that is not constant fine so we are comparing the coefficients in the above equation right and firstly we'll be comparing constant coefficient the constant term fine and the constant term here was a b naught and in the right hand side just observe that is minus 1 power n what is the constant term in the right hand side you can easily see that this is the last term here fine independent of lambda fine so this is a n into i fine now let us uh, now let us compare the coefficient of lambda 
so just observe once you multiply a with all these terms so lambda will be appearing with b1 fine so this will be a into b1 so a into b1 and once you multiply minus lambda with again with this so what you will be getting is minus lambda i into b naught so you will be getting minus b naught also so minus b naught plus a b1 and what is this equals to this is equals to minus 1 raised to power n and the second last term from here that is a n minus 1 fine into i fine observing the sequence so so now let us compare the coefficient of lambda raised to power n minus 1 in the right hand side lambda raised to power n minus 1 is compare is appearing with a1 so in the right hand side we'll be getting minus 1 raised to power n into a1 into i fine and what about uh, left hand side uh, where is the what is the coefficient of lambda raised to power n minus 1 so once you multiply a so just observe so the second last term before this so what is the term before this let me write it here so that will be b n minus 2 lambda raised to power n minus 2 and once you multiplied a with all these terms so what is the coefficient of lambda raised to power n minus 1 so that is a b n minus 1 so this thing is clear i think a b n minus 1 what about after multiplying it with minus lambda into i so once you multiply this term with this term fine so just multiply these two terms so what you will be getting is the you will be getting a coefficient of lambda raised to power n minus 1 so that so the coefficient will be minus b n minus 2 fine and finally when you will be comparing the coefficient of lambda raised to power n in the right hand side you are just left with minus 1 power n into identity fine and in the left hand side you can now easily observe so you are getting minus b n minus 1 so that are the coefficients for the above equation so and now our next step will be i'll be multiplying these equations so i'll be multiplying the first equation with identity the second equation with a third equation with a square and so on and i'll be adding these equations so let me write what are the equations what are the desired equations after multiplying the uh, system of equations so the first equation was multiplied by identity so this is nothing but a b naught is equals to minus 1 power n a n into i so multiply the second equation with a so you'll be getting minus a b naught plus a square b 1 is equals to minus 1 raised to power n a n minus 1 capital a fine and so on so this last equation will be multiplied with a raised to power n so this will be minus a raised to power n b sub n minus 1 this is equal to minus 1 power n into a raised to power n and let me write the second last equation also for you people so the second last equation will correspond as minus a raised to power n minus 1 b sub n minus 2 fine plus a raised to power n b sub n minus 1 this is equals to minus 1 raised to power n a sub 1 into a raised to power n minus 1 now the next step is just add these equations so just add these equations so on right hand side observe this thing so this will get cancelled out with this term similarly this will get cancelled out with this term fine and this is getting cancelled out with this term so the left hand side is zero and what is the right hand side what is the right hand side observe this thing so this is nothing but minus one power n a n fine so i'm taking out minus one power n common so a n plus a n minus 1 into a plus so on to a 1 into capital a raised to power n minus 1 plus a into capital so capital a raised to power n and since left hand side was equal to right hand side and observe one thing what is the right hand side so this is a very known equation which we have assumed before writing the proof this so this was nothing but the row of a so this comes out to be zero so every matrix satisfies characteristic polynomial so now i'll be explaining one of the application of callis hamilton theorem although callis hamilton theorem plays a very very important role in research point of view also you may refer many articles and you'll be seeing that 
many mathematicians use this result of Kelly's Hamilton theorem. But for you, I'll be proving a very simple thing. That is, Kelly's Hamilton theorem is used in finding the inverse of a matrix. Fine. So inverse of a matrix. So that is one of the application of Kelly's Hamilton theorem. Of course, inverse of a matrix would be calculated if and only if the matrix is non-singular. So I'll be taking a very simple example for you people. So let A be any 3 cross 3 matrix and the matrix is 1, 0, 2, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 4, 2, 3. So you can calculate the characteristic polynomial corresponding to this A. So the characteristic polynomial corresponding to A. So this is nothing but lambda cube minus 3 lambda square minus 9 lambda plus 3 is equals to 0. So apply the Kelly's Hamilton theorem. So by Kelly's Hamilton theorem. So A cube minus 3A square minus 9A plus 3 identity is equals to 0. Fine. Now since A was a non-singular matrix so you can apply a inverse on both sides fine so once you apply a inverse on both sides so what you can do here is so a square minus 3a minus 9 identity plus 3a inverse is equals to 0 so what is a inverse so a inverse is 1 by 3 fine and that 2 of a negative into a square minus 3a minus 9i so so in the next step i will be compensating this negative sign so this is nothing but minus a square by 3 fine plus a plus 3 into identity fine now you can calculate the value of a so you know the value of a you can calculate the value of a square just substitute the value of a here Substitute the value of a square here and divide all the terms with 3, fine. And you know the value of identity matrix, just multiply it by 3. So you will be getting the inverse of a matrix from here. So that is your task and I will be writing the answer here for you people. So the answer will be 1 by 3 times 3 minus 6, 0, minus 4, 5, 2 and the last is minus 8, 4 and 1. So that is how we calculate the inverse of a matrix using Kelly's Hamilton theorem. So I hope you have understood the proof and the application of a Kelly's Hamilton theorem in this video lecture properly. If you have any doubts, you can mention those doubts in the comment box. And for more such videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel and do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you very much.